Welcome to bi-weekly update video number one, where I'm going to be going through what I've been working on the last two weeks with MegaX. There's a lot to get into, so let's dive right in. Starting off, as you may know, I just launched subscriptions on my YouTube channel. This helps me make some money to put towards projects. None of this money is going into my pocket. It's just all going into projects. And one of the perks of both, the, both tiers of these memberships is that you're going to get bi-weekly update videos from me showing what I've been doing and what I'm going to be working on and just get a less edited version of me just showing what I've been working on and getting a little bit more deep or doing things that maybe wouldn't work too good on a full video where I know engagement wouldn't be that good. But also, if you cannot be a member, you're still going to get everything. Um, you're not going to be cut off with any content, just these bi-weekly update videos pretty much. Well, starting off, as you guys may know that I post on my community tab, I've been working on the MegaX test site. Um, this is a very large test site, and it's in the ground, as you guys may know. It's in the ground because MegaX is going to be very big. Actually, we'll segue into another topic. This is MegaX's propellant liner. I have SN2s right here, which you can see it's huge. SN2 had around one pound of propellant, and Mega X is going to have a little less than nine pounds of propellant at an overall diameter of three inches internal. So for safety, we want to make sure this chamber's in the ground just in case anything happens, which most likely nothing will happen. But if anything happens, it's shielded and it won't hit any surrounding areas or people, which there's nobody around anyways, just to be sure. Pretty much for this project, I dug a deep hole with an excavator and then I laid a concrete slab, which was very difficult. Um, I hope I never need to do it again. But I did it. It was, it was a decent finish. It wasn't great. Not as great as my other test site for the SN series. And then I got cinder blocks. And as of right now, I'm on my third layer. Masonry is very difficult. I didn't know it was going to be so difficult. First layer was very difficult. Second layer and third layer have been easier. But it's been very difficult to get a lineup on all the bricks because sometimes they're protruding on the ends where I end. So I have an idea for that, um, which I'm going to try maybe in a few days when I get back to finishing up the test site. But yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to be, a, a huge concrete chamber. It's going to be painted probably white, gray, or black. I'm not sure yet, just to make it look nicer, more visually pleasing. It'll also help protect with water on the cinder block because cinder block is porous, um, so it will soak up water. But why I'm not working on that is because I'm working on Mega X. Just like I was just showing, this is the first piece of hardware for Mega X. And I just pretty much finalized the simulation, so I'll show you that. It's not totally finalized, some things may change, but this is most likely what it's going to be. Looking at Mega X, the total impulse is going to be right below 5,000 Newton seconds, which is crazy because SN5 only had a total impulse of 723 Newton seconds. So it's way, way, way bigger, um, which I'm really excited. Specific impulse is around 126 seconds. See, that's going to be a thing where we're going to see if I can achieve that. This is a simulation, so this is the best case scenario. I'm going to really try to match this simulation, but it's going to be really tough, but I think I should be able to get pretty close to it. The average pressure is 479 PSI, which I think is definitely achievable because SN5's peak thrust was 453 PSI. So if I was able to do that, um, we're, we'll be able to stay in range. The peak pressure is about 629 PSI. The casing is definitely safe. Uh, I did some calculations on the casing. Casing is safe within, I think, around 4,000 PSI. So I really am trying to make this safe. It's going to be a little heavier, but we'll see in future iterations of Mega X if I can slim down that casing. Also, the propellant is going to be very hard to pour, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get air bubbles, and air bubbles increase the pressure. So I'm giving myself acceptable pressure range of up to 1,000 PSI which I don't think it will get up to 1,000 PSI, but all my pressure transducers will go up to around 2,000 PSI just to make sure I'm in acceptable ranges. But yeah, so if there's no voids in the propellant and everything goes exactly as a simulation, it'll be around 629 PSI. Now looking at the propellant mass that I was talking about earlier, it's at 8.8 .8 pounds. Um, SN2 right here was only a pound, and SN5 was a little bit over a pound. So that's where we're at. Simulation looks pretty good. Now looking at the nozzle, it's pretty basic. Um, throat diameter is 0 0.85 inches. Um, diverging half angle is 15 degrees, which is also pretty basic, which um, SN5 and all the SN series had a 15 degree di diverging angle. The converging angle is quite steep at 50 degrees. That's just to help get a more compact nozzle. I may lose a little bit of specific impulse on that, but I'm fine with losing that impulse with being able to slim down the nozzle and make it more light. Now looking at the grain geometry, we have a three inch overall diameter. 
um, with a length of 21 inches, which I will touch on that in a minute, and a core diameter of 1.25 inches. I picked 1.25 inches because I'm going to be using the same casting technique as SN series, where I'm going to need a silicone tube. I could tweak that number and maybe be able to get it a little better, but we need a pretty basic number so I'm able to find a silicone tube that perfect um, size. So as you can see with the length, it says 21 inches, but the finisil is going to be 3 inches, so that'll be 24 inches total. That is actually exactly how long this cardboard tube is, which I think it's going to make it easier because with the SN series, where the tape is is where these two segments break, and I would need to tape them together, and then sometimes it wouldn't be taped too even, and then it wouldn't fit perfectly in the casing, and I would need to shave off sides where the tape is. This is just one thing, so I'll be able to slide this right into the casing. Um, I'm going to touch on something with the casing, which I'm a little nervous about, but we'll see how it goes. So that segues us on to what is next. As I was just talking about, I just finished the simulation, which is really where I want it for Mega X. Um, and the next thing is to finish up the test site. Um, the test site's probably, I'd say, a little more than 50% done, but that's no rush because we need that at the last stage for testing, and that's the last stage of this whole development program. So what I'm on right now is picking out a casing. So I found a casing that is three and a quarter inner diameter and three and a half outer diameter. That's gonna be great. That's gonna be able to be safe and thick enough. It's made out of aluminum, like all my other casings. It is a local retailer that I'm gonna get it with, which will help because this is not too precise. I know this casing is gonna be perfectly the size that it's saying online, but this, case, this cardboard liner is a little bumpy in some areas so I'm gonna to talk to them because I want to go in there to be able to slide this in before I buy it because the casing is I think like around $75 so I would like to not need to buy it and it's also custom cut so once I buy it there's no returning because I think it's just gonna be either it's gonna fit perfectly or it's gonna be off by just the littlest bit so my plan is if it doesn't to sand this down and if it's really bad I guess try to source another liner the liner is by far the hard it's this took me such a long time to find now after that is designing the nozzle, which I'm working on. Actually, I was just working on it right now um, before I did this update. Um, the nozzle is going to be similar to SN5. We're going to have probably two O-rings. As you can see with the CAD, I haven't added two O-rings yet. Um, I haven't added the O-rings groove yet because I'm just trying to figure out the core geometry. I'm going to use the same little lip on the top left, as you can see, to index it to the top of the casing um, so I can have these bolt holes going straight through it perfectly. Also with the nozzle that I haven't started, I'm going to do the calculations to know how many radial bolts we need on the outside and if we're going to stagger them because with the SN series, I just had them, some, some of these bolts aren't in, just all on one plane. I may stagger them for Mega X. We're just going to cross that road if the calculations show that we need to, but we'll see about that. I'm not sure. But yeah, pretty much the nozzle is in very early development stages. I haven't even started the bulkhead yet. That's going to be very simple. going to be very, very similar to any of the other motors. Here's SN4. Um, it's pretty much going to have a pressure transducer going through it. I may do two pressure transducers. I'm not sure yet, um, but I'm thinking about two just for redundancy again, just in case one goes wrong. But I've never had an issue with the pressure transducer for the two tests I've had. So we'll see. We'll look at prices. Um, but it's going to be very similar. Pressure transducer going through it. Um, same ignition system as all the SN series, so I won't be having a ignition bolt that goes through it. One thing I may add to the bulkhead is something to mechanically attach the bulkhead to the load cell, because with my other tests, the load cell was just kind of touching the bulkhead. With my later tests with SM4 and SM5, I had this motor mount adapter, but still it was just butted up to the load cell. I think it would be better if I actually mechanically attach it to the load cell some way, just to make sure I'm getting as accurate as possible. And then, yeah, once the nozzle and the bulkhead is designed, I'm on to ordering the parts. And then when I'm ordering the parts in that time frame, which takes around a week-ish, um, I'll be casting this propellant. And, yeah, then I'm going to need to build the test stand. We're going to be using a whole different test stand. I haven't worked too much on that, so I don't want to talk about that too much. But it's not going to be like 2x4s or 2x8s like my other test stand I built. It's going to be made out of aluminum for more rigidity, and I think it's just going to be easier. And yeah, once the test stand is built within the Arduino, it's mostly going to be running the same code for the pressure transducer and load cell. I've never had an issue except for the first test, but since the first test of SN1, I've never had an issue with the load cell and pressure transducer and Arduino, so I don't think I'm going to change that up. Um, I may add some cameras that run to the Arduino so I can perfectly index the data 
with the cameras because right now I'm just starting GoPros so I'm not able to perfectly index the GoPro starting and then the data logger starting but I may use like a run cam from one of my FPV drones to record that to an SD card on Arduino and yeah once the test stand's done it's down to assembling the motor and attaching it and testing it I'm very excited I'm trying to get it done as soon as possible but as smartly as possible. I don't want to go too fast and then something bad happens. And yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at with the development of Mega X. Videos to expect soon. So I am working on the test site video, even though it's not done yet, but I'm going to work on that. Expect a test site video. Um, how would you like this series drawn out? Because with my other series, I did start behind the scenes with the SN5. Do you want the design, build, and test all in one video or separate videos, like a design video, a build video, a test video, um, maybe a a test stand video um, and I'm obviously already doing the um, test site video would you like more videos like that because I'll be able to go more in depth because if I went very in depth in all those things in one video the video would probably be an hour which is not great for the YouTube algorithm and also I would assume you guys don't want to watch this a, a whole hour of me talking so if you guys would like me to break it up in those videos it would also help me and you because more frequent uploads and also easier for me because I'm able to break them up into separate videos even though I am still doing the videos please let me know in the comments below and that's pretty much all i got for you guys um, please consider supporting the channel it really will help with funding these larger projects as you can see with sn5 in the liner of mega x the liner is just way bigger and this is just the line this is this is the whole motor but yeah the support really helps and if you want to see these bi-weekly update videos every two weeks that's how you'll be able to access it so thank you so much for watching please subscribe comment like and i'll see you guys in the next video